Hey everyone, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and in this video we're going to watch The Big Bang Theory Season 11 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this season really are. I know you're mad, but I have to write a statement that says the physics community is close to a breakthrough and since you actually believe that, I could really use your help. Sorry, I can't. Come on, don't be like that. I can't because I think you were right. What? It's not that physics will not have a breakthrough in the future, it's becoming significantly more difficult for theoretical physics to play an applicable role in everyday life. People asking the question, why are we exploring space? What are we actually getting out of it? Well, space travel is not useless. Some of the technology that we have on Earth as a result are wireless power tools, better internet, better cameras. All these things have to be invented so that we can capture images of supernovas and stars and black holes and all sorts of stuff in outer space. All of these things are advanced because of space travel and space exploration. Innovating as a means of learning more about the universe is why we explore space. In physics, the most common thing that I can think of is string theory. Well, how does solving string theory actually apply to somebody here and now? It's really, really hard to tell. And that I think that's what Sheldon was saying, was proving if string theory is correct then what? Who cares? Where do you go from there? Versus theoretical physics around World War II was quantum mechanics. That was applicable to the real world because it gave us the atomic bomb. Do we know if there's life in the methane fumes of Enceladus? Or under the icy surface of Europa? Come back on Tuesday for my next show to find out. Spoiler alert. We don't. <laughs> this reminds me of a friend of mine who is just... How he came up with this, I don't know. Made up facts while being a museum tour guide. Something along the lines of Genghis Khan invented the telephone so he could call President Obama to complete the Louisiana Purchase and that's why we have the Pledge of Allegiance. Something just out of nowhere, like what the hell was that? I don't know where he got it from. To this day, I'm still amazed he had a job for so long over there. It just makes me wonder at a certain point, when someone's giving a presentation like this or making a YouTube video like this, people are fact-checking him, right? Because at a certain point, if you have a lesser understanding of astrophysics, he could just be making it up. And you oftentimes wouldn't even know. So fact-check. Check this out. Look at that. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. The crystallization is an exothermic process, so the ice is actually hot. I won first place for this. So did I. I threw Jenny's baby shower. <laughs> that is super cool. Hot ice experiment. It combines baking soda and vinegar, and when you form the sodium acetate, or hot ice, it crystallizes instantly. And that allows you to make these towering, really cool structures right at home. And the process of crystallization is exothermic, just as Leonard was saying. Exothermic reactions means that it releases heat as a chemical reaction takes place. That's why the ice that forms as a result will actually be hot to the touch, though it's not actually ice, it's not cold water, it's sodium acetate. You said you were taking a break from the band to help with me and the baby. Yes, and write an astronaut musical. <laughs> Picture this, the curtain opens. There's a lone astronaut floating in the inky blackness of space, maybe wires, maybe fog. I'll let the director figure that out. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I gotta give it, this is pretty awesome. I can tell you a lot of engineers that will bring their work home with them or when they're not working, they're still just tinkering with technology and which is all fun. I don't do that. I, I'm somebody who, when I leave work, I am not engineering. I am doing stuff like YouTube or stand-up comedy, just things that bring me joy and I can have fun with it. A lot of engineers do these side projects though, so that just tells you how passionate people really get about this. What I do outside of work has nothing to do with while I'm at work. And recently there was this thing called Arts Beats and Eats in Royal Oak, Michigan. It's a bunch of sound stages with live music and there's food trucks everywhere from local vendors and you get local and national artists to choose from, which is actually where I got these pieces uh, back here. It was at an art fair. That's what I really like to do, and I feel like that's just so much more exciting. But when I'm not at work, I I'm playing video games with friends or I'm going to bars. That we, we still have fun. Not all engineers and physicists and scientists. We still party, we still drink, we still have all these outside activities. This baby's got a 10 inch diameter with F10 ACF optics. And tonight, Mercury is at its highest elongation. This is another way of saying 
Mercury is in retrograde, and if you're a girl who hasn't lived the perfect life in the past week, it's Mercury's fault. Look at that! I discovered a comet! Oh. What do you mean, you discovered it? Well, I'm the one who saw it. In my telescope that I positioned, all you did was look into it. Well, you both discovered it. You can put both your names on the registration form. We're back at it with the sharing credit. Scientists do not like to share that at all. You want me to share credit? Uh-huh. <laughs> Get out. When you're using the equipment to make the discovery, it also means the person who is loaning you the equipment, they do get a piece of it. That applies for universities as well. You'll never see something like Michigan State University wins the Nobel Prize in physics. Scientists will win the Nobel Prize. The trade-off is that the university is claiming the scientists would not have made the discovery if it wasn't for the university. The scientist is saying, well, if it wasn't for my brain, this wouldn't have happened ever. The university is like, yeah, we agree with you, but if you didn't have this million dollar telescope and access to all of this stuff which you don't pay to use, you didn't pay to set up, then we get part of it too. There is a mutual thing going on here. Now, it's not 50-50, I'll tell you that. The university is going to be taking a whole lot more. And it also brings a lot more notoriety. God knows how many STEM students went to Princeton just because Albert Einstein used to teach there. Or just because Richard Feynman went there. How many people actually went to Berkeley for theoretical physics because Oppenheimer brought it to the U.S. from Europe. The universities want to show that they have have facilities and means to produce future Nobel Prize winners because they've produced previous ones. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got some value out of it, give me a thumbs up and I wish you all the best rest of your day. That was awesome.